Time to get up. Time to rise from the bed of sleep. Come on. Nice. The skin is a very large organ. Shouts out. Get out of your, get out, get up out of this seat. You hear that sound? That's right. I'm out in the backyard in the shed again, uh, hitting the side of this bird cage that we found back here. That's right. We love to eat oranges. Hands in the air if you're listening to this and you are like, nice, because that's what I'm talking about. I do like oranges. And let's talk about specifics. Let's get in here. Valencia. Who's, who likes them oranges? Valencia oranges. Time to get rowdy. Welcome to episode 11. We're getting rambunctious on this episode because we're rowdy and we like getting loud and uh, and nod and bad. We are so bad here. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we like it. Now, um, I do have a little bit of a theme for this episode, and that is social media and the internet. Now, <laughs> what a broad theme. Uh, it really doesn't matter, but you know, the opening, you know, stop, stop. Stop messing around with me. You know, stop messing around with me. Enough, don't make fun of me on my own show. You know, sometimes lately, I've been having, you know, disempowering thoughts that get under my skin, you know, really make me think not very nice things about myself, not very loving thoughts. And, you know, sometimes I get ticked off at them thoughts and I'm like, get out of here. You're not wanted here anymore. Get out. You're not our friend anymore. I kick them thoughts out of here. Get out. Mm. I was sitting outside in a dumpster for 40 hours trying to get my back washed. If you're going through your day and you're like doing stuff on your phone or other people around you are, one thing that's interesting to do is just imagine that there's nothing going on inside the phone. Like it's just a piece of plastic and metal and uh, and glass or whatever it is. And it's just like people are just like staring at this like object and like rubbing it with their finger. And just staring at it, and just staring at it more. And then they put it in their pocket, and then they take it back out like less than a minute later. Yeah, that's the life. Now, of course, that's not what's happening. We are connecting to other actual human beings on the other side of that. And it is ridiculous when people imply that we're not. Paul Miller, if you ever heard of that guy, he's a tech blogger who went offline for a whole year. And then he wrote about it and made some videos about it. He did a TED Talk about it. I like the video about it on The Verge, about I'm back from the internet after a year offline. That sometimes spoke to me, and I'm like, hmm, I would like to be free of the internet for a while like that. But then I was like, well, what would I do offline? What would I do with my extra time? And really the thing, the only thing that came to mind what I would really love to do with the extra time is to make stuff on the internet, which is not offline, I know, but, and so basically what I'm thinking about is that basically passive use of the internet sucks. If you're just clicking around, if you're just refreshing your notifications, if it's not really inspiring you, you're just kind of in this routine and in this daze, that sucks. And I would like to cut more of that time out of my life. But the power of the internet to create stuff in the world, create real things in real people's lives, like real laughter. Like if I was funny successfully in the introduction of this podcast and then 1,000 people listen to it and 300 people laugh, that's real laughter on 300 people's faces, real smiles on 300 people's faces. And the numbers could be much smaller than that or much bigger than that. And I think even if you make a real smile on one person's face, it really matters. In 2012, I was such a, really an advocate of being on the internet all the time. In 2012, I made a lot of jokes about, like, fuck IRL. Like, I don't go IRL. <laughs> Why would you want to do anything IRL, you know? And it was kind of funny, but it was also a little bit serious. And, and I can tell you why in a second. But in 2013, I really cut back on those memes. And I started introducing more other memes like look at the moon and, you know, things about dogs, things about 
um, nature stuff maybe more because I realized a lot of the uh, for a lot of people being on the internet all the time is not really a healthy lifestyle. But I feel like at certain times it has been for me, but not all times. But at certain times, being on the internet for ten hours in a row or all fucking day for multiple days in a row for multiple weeks in a row has been very healthy for me and very exciting very invigorating very spiritually deeply emotionally fulfilling and i want to talk about that in 2012 when i was on the internet so much what i was doing was that i was building my my career as an artist, as a poet, whatever, I was building opportunities for myself. I was building a following on the internet, an audience for my work. I was creating my artwork that means so much to me. And then I was interacting with the fans that follow it, that care about it, and making so many, so many community ties and friendships around it. So for me, <laughs> Being on the internet all day meant that I was working really hard to actualize the, the vision in my head and make it real and build opportunity for myself and impact other people's lives positively. You know, responding to people who like my stuff and it meant so much to them, etc., etc. It was really, really dang good. And I feel like I've, I haven't been on top of that work ethic and that approach to my work quite the same way ever since then. 2015, I'm getting closer to doing that again better. I've had some streaks recently where I sit down and I listen to Carly Rae Jepsen songs on repeat for hours and hours, and I reply to a lot of emails and a lot of Facebook messages and a lot of tweets, and I start to feel really connected with my community and feeling really good that, you know, this person who wanted to interview me, I'm actually doing that for them or whatever. And, um... The weird thing about spending all day online replying one by one to people's tweets, replying one by one to people's emails, especially if they're people, you know, emailing you about your work or whatever, is that, you know, a lot of people assume that it's tiring. A lot of people assume, God, I don't know how you can spend the time doing that. I don't know how you can spend the time starting all these conversations. Not just replying to people, but also starting tons more conversations, reigniting conversations with people who liked your stuff a few months ago and then were posting it then and whatever. People think that's really tiring. They're like, I couldn't do that. But it's very energy giving if you're really doing it right. Um, a lot of times it's very energy giving and I found the same thing about touring a lot of times sometimes once in a while it will feel tiring to me I'm like why did I book all these shows this month and then all this shows next month too and I'm not getting paid that much per show so oftentimes I'm not getting paid anything except you know just trying to take donations and sell some books and it can seem like wow that's got to be tiring to truck all around the country like that but it's like well not really it's sometimes quite energized if you have the right attitude about it and if you keep in the right focus with it. You know, in the same way that exercising gives you energy rather than making you feel sluggish and tired. You know, regular exercise increases your energy every day. And that's why I do have talons. <laughs> and I will continue to grow my own talons out of my hands. And if anyone thinks that I am lying, I'll, I don't like that. Because do y'all know about Magic Hour? It's called Magic Hour, I guess. Sometimes you can call it the Golden Hour. And it's basically the hour where the sun is between 6 degrees above and 6 degrees below the horizon. Basically, it's around sunset time or sunrise time. But, you know, the actual moment of sunset or sunrise isn't what we always mean by sunset and sunrise. We actually mean, you know, the, the moments leading up to it and after it because all that time is going to be this nice light in the sky where we get these oranges and these pinks and these purples. And so, shouts out, it's in Magic Hour right now. There is an app for iPhone that tells you when Magic Hour is and it gives you a notification and it tells you how many more hours until it's here and all this. Um, and it's a pretty good app, but, you know, I'm just going to lay down some knowledge for y'all about Twilight because I, you know, I get a little bat, I get a little batty and nutty sometimes and I got to let loose 
and I got to shake my little caboose. And this is one example. When people talk about Twilight, they're really not being specific enough, and you should really give give a a little update, a little give a little uh, tune up. You really need to tune up those folks who are talking about Twilight without getting into specifics. Let's talk about specifics here. Civil Twilight is the first Twilight. When the sun immediately drops under the horizon and it is not yet six degrees below, that's Civil Twilight. Usually in Civil Twilight, you can read a book outside without any lighting needed other than the light that's still in the sky from the sun. That's Civil Twilight. Next level of Twilight is called Nautical Twilight. And you know why? Well, it was probably, I think it was really helpful for people who were in ships because you can see the stars, which will help you with orientation and directions. You can see, you can also see the horizon line. You can see, you know, land on the horizon. You can see the outline of that. Both of those in Nautical Twilight is between 6 to 12 degrees below the horizon. Now, after that, you're going to get into astronomical twilight. And what that is, is that it's pretty much just, it's pretty much night. It's not entirely night, but you can see almost all the stars and you can't really see the horizon line that well, but you can see almost all the stars and it's astronomical twilight. And then when it's below 18 degrees below the horizon, well then it's just night. If you want to drive a car full of dead clowns into my house, just crash it through the wall. I literally, literally have no opinion on that. I literally won't even care. I won't even look at it. I'll just be like, okay. I won't even say that, though, because I won't even notice that it happened because it literally doesn't even register for me. Some people are giving me truly, actually, at length feedback about this show. Shouts out and thank you to the people who are doing that. I'm trying to make something that will be of use to you. Nice. Goodbye. I'm done. Goodbye. I'm out of here. You know, and I'm going to go vape for a, at least one year and then I'm out of here uh, in terms of life because I will die. <laughs>